I don't see any audio. I mean, I don't hear any audio. Now, now it might be mute on your end. I don't feel it. Do you think it's gone? Just that be the afternoon, everyone. It'll just be another moment, and we'll get oh, started. Yeah, have a number of people coming into the room. Shelby, you heard something. State House. <clears throat> so, just a reminder: there, um, not election year, but we had a few changes in the State House. A few new, new faces. Um, Senator Donato replaced Senator Randy Head from the Logansport area, and we had um, two new faces in the House. Um, Representative Sherman replaced Representative Gazelle in Indianapolis, and Representative Vermillion replaced uh, Representative Mahan from Maryland. So, three new female faces in the State House, which is nice. And um, obviously, you've all heard uh, Speaker Bogma. This is his last session. He plans uh, not to run again. Um, the House Republicans have elected the, a speaker elect, Representative Houston, um, who is a great friend of charter schools, so we're very lucky there. Um, so he's working hand in hand with the speaker this year to deal with all the fun behind the scenes leadership issues. Um, so we're interested to watch how those transitions take place over the coming year, but I think we're headed in a good direction in the House. Um, but definitely, um, the Speaker has always been a champion for charter schools, so we'll miss having him around, but um, leadership, I think, is still in a good position for charter schools. 
Um, this is a short session. I'm very thankful for that. Not a budget year. Um, have to adjourn by March 14th. But everyone is set on March 11th. I'm shooting for like February, but no one's really listening to that yet. So um, if you've got any sway with any legislators, you know, feel free to pass that along. Um, so the deadlines are listed there. Committee report deadlines um, come up at the end of January. So just a reminder, right? Any bills filed, um, if they're going to continue about the process, have to be heard before the committee report deadline. Same thing with second reading deadline and third reading deadline before we switch houses. So happy to go through a more detailed how a bill becomes a law. Or you could probably pull up a fun YouTube Schoolhouse Rocks video, but you guys probably all remember this from previous years. So um, yesterday afternoon was the bill filing deadline. Um, so we have five about 500 bills that are public right now. There are a whole lot of bills that aren't public yet. So they all had to be filed, but they don't show up to the public until they're assigned to a committee and released on a bill list. So we know there are a whole lot of bills that haven't showed up yet. Um, so keep checking, right? And there'll be plenty more to come, plenty more good ones, maybe some good more good ones, plenty of scary ones to come. Um, right now we have 285 Senate bills, 211 House bills, and only 16 and 34 of those are in the education committees, which is where the bulk of the bills you care about get assigned to, not all. So um, you can go ahead and move on to the next slide. This is a bill tracking link. I think everyone here is familiar with this. We've been doing this for a few years. So this link, you can use it all throughout session. The bills will update in real time. Um, as more bills are uh, publicly released, we'll add them to the tracker if they impact schools in any way. Um, so you can see them. So pay attention to this. Kind of take a glance at it next week and see what new bills are there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so the bill tracker link, the handout you have in front of you, that's what it is right now. For those of you online, you should be able to click on it and pull it up. Um, so again, this will update automatically. It has committee report information on there or committee. So if it's scheduled for hearing, you can see that. There's a link to the bill page, so you can go to the link. From that page, you can see the fiscal impact. If you ever have any questions on like, I can't find something, or how do I work this, just let us know. Um, I think most of us uh, in our office can get enough sleep by now, so we'll be happy to help you guys with that. A um, couple over, just a broad session overview. Um, a lot of conversation, we'll dive into the education stuff here in a minute. But from an overview, what are the agenda or the agendas and priorities of legislative leadership and the governor in this session? Um, Health care, transparency, um, there's a, a lot of conversation and bills on that. There was like a five hour committee hearing and it wasn't an education committee hearing this week. So I was um, glad not to have to sit through that. Um, but that is a priority of the governor and legislative leadership. Moving the smoking age and making age from 18 to 21. Um, the feds made that really easy for them. So um, that should be a pretty pretty much easy done deal. And then uh, funding and teacher pay, right? So that's obviously come up um, non-budget year. So we don't typically open up a budget in a non-budget year. Um, however, we had, the state is lucky enough to have some revenues that we didn't expect to come in. And so legislative leaders had decided that um, priorities that were passed in the budget of April of 2019, this last year, um, there were a few like higher ed projects that were bonded. Um, if we pay cash for them, with some of the additional revenues we have, we end up saving millions in interest. But we'll hopefully free up additional money for K-12 education and or other priorities in the upcoming budget session. So that their goal is to use the one-time funding um, to pay down some of that debt early on so that we have a little more flexibility in our budget um, in the next budget year. Obviously, you guys the media, um, you know that a lot of folks are calling for, well, all this money, you should just increase teacher pay. So there are probably going to be no less than two dozen bills, but probably more than that, right? By the time we're done seeing all these that have some sort of mandated teacher pay or teacher increase, we've already had a couple bills and amendments pop up in the first week talking about teacher pay. So it will be a topic throughout session. I think legislative leaders have pretty strong in their comments that it's irresponsible to spend one-time funding on teacher salaries that we don't know that we can commit to 10 years after that. So 
kind of where we are with teacher today, but we're going to hear a lot about it. So those are kind of the big, the big issues we're hearing about this session. We'll go ahead and dive into some of the education stuff. Um, I'll go through a couple of the big buckets, and then any questions you guys have, any bills in here you have questions about or interesting, something you don't see yet, um, we'll do our best to answer all your questions. So the first, the first ones will be around accountability to iLearn. Um, obviously, this is a busy first week. We had three education committee hearings within the first four days of session. Um, it's not usual. But so House Bill 1001 and Senate Bill 2 are identical bills. It's the hold harmless bill. Um, it is a two year hold harmless, not a one year. It includes high schools, even though high schools didn't take iLearn. Um, so they're being incredibly generous. Um, I think part of this is there's a desire by um, many in the caucus, the caucuses to have retool our accountability system. Not a whole lot of agreement on what our accountability system looks like, look right now. Definitely some concern from legislators um, about having the current superintendent overly involved in some of those accountability conversations. And so I think the two year window they look at as a period that we can adjust, come back, get accountability right and move forward. So we'll see how all that actually plays out. But that's kind of the thinking, the best that I can tell. Um, these bills, um, so from a consequence standpoint, no new consequence. So if you're, but if you're currently in consequences, right, you're for your F, you're under um, issue, like that will, that will stay in place. But the timeline essentially pauses for two years. So if I'm an F for three years, the clock stops for 18, 19, 19, 20. So the grade that comes out in the summer or fall of 21 will like pick up in that timeline. So that's the gist of 1001 and 1001 and 1002. Those bills uh, passed out of committee. Um, were on second reading in both the House and Senate yesterday. No amendments added. It will likely pass uh, third reading on Monday. Switch chambers. Um, I don't know if we're going to hear both of them. If they'll decide we're moving the House version or the Senate version, but I would suspect that bill will be at the governor's desk within two weeks, if not sooner. Yes. No change federal accountability. Correct. No change in federal accountability. And what's the impact for adults? Perhaps the, it's all schools, so it should apply to every. Okay. I'll double check that, but I'm. So the question was what's the impact on adult high schools? I think it applies evenly across the board, right? Everybody gets the letter grade that it's either, if, if your letter grade went up under this, these island scores, or your you get the better of the two grades, but if you're 17, 18, then it was better you keep it. And that's, that's all across the board, but I'll just double check to make sure. Are you saying for schools or are you saying for parents or are you um, have some sort of place? So um, for the same sort of people looking for a better school that's kind of the grade they're issuing? Yeah, so the question for those of you who, um, it was do if you're already in consequences, do those sanctions still apply until the grade goes up? So there was a, a potential amendment uh, that the Senate offered, but they didn't actually hear. So would try to clarify this um, because it's silent. So when I talked to the state board, they said, you know, we, we wanted to clarify it, but we believe essentially what happens is sanctions continue. There are still, the state board still has the existing waiver authority, right? So I think there'll be some flexibility in practice of what comes out, what changes, tweaks, but it's silent. So I think that the, the the flexibility to allow what needs to happen there. Yes. What's the line that's like for the two year old <clears throat> plus versus just like the one year? Is there a lot of that um, no, if these these bills are oh sorry the question was what's the will we push back on the two year hold harmless versus the one? Um, I think a lot of people were surprised like in committee testimony they were like oh we just thought it's gonna be one we're really excited it's two. Maybe we should go for three to five years, right? Like so it's like <laughs> thanks for giving us <laughs> Um, for some of us who like to think there's a good case for accountability, that scares, that scares me. Uh, but I think the two year, I think these bills are what you see today is what the governor will sign in a, in a week or two from now. I don't think there's, there's going to be some safety. But if your letter grade went up, you get the yes, you get the higher, you get the higher of your letter grade. Yep. So 
the question was about uh, NA schools. And so that also remains somewhat silent in here. It's the same thing that happened in the 26 fold harmless that we asked about. What's better, um, a C or an NA, right? If I jump, like, and there's no, so I think what it'll be is when the state board comes out with grades and they have the appeal process, it'll be a conversation there, right? Do you want to keep an NA or do you want to go to what the other letter grade will be? The other bill that in education that was fast tracked this week was House Bill 1002, which uh, permanently decouples any requirement for um, student assessment, student objective learning measures to be part of teacher evaluation. So I know charters had a little bit more flexibility, but essentially if you wanted any tag grants, you had to abide by that. So that bill seems to be moving. I know some folks in the Senate initially weren't as excited about it as folks in the House. So we'll see what happens when it moves over there. Um, but I, I do think it's going to be hard for them to back away from this one. There was a lot of support um, in committee from, from uh, the typical school association. So um, the other, so if anyone has questions online, feel free to type them into the box and we'll make be sure to answer them. Um, but kind of moving on to the DREG bucket, um, every single year there are probably like 30 bills filed of you should do this, new requirements, new mandates, and they will still continue. Um, but there is a little bit of a focus, which is a nice thing on DREG this year. So House Bill 1003 is the first bill. Um, this is the House Agenda Bill. It does a couple of things. Um, it sets up a waiver process through the State Board of Education. So any school or group of schools can go to the State Board and say, we don't believe we should have to do X, Y, and Z. We don't believe it helps students and will you waive those rules? And so it sets up a process that if the school comes up with a, a plan or a reason, a reason um, the state board can say, okay, you don't have to do X, Y, and Z. Now, there is a list of things that you can't be waived from, right? You still have to take the test, et cetera, right? like the, the, Some of the things that we expect. Yes, Marcy. Yes. So if you guys remember, so the question was what counts as a group of schools? So some of this language is modeled off of Representative Baining's bill a couple years ago. Um, and I'm totally drawing a blank on the name, but it was like the, there was a group of schools that could get together and go to the state board and have additional flexibility. Um, and so they, and I'm totally blanking on the name of what they're called, the continuous improvement schools or something. Um, they just kind of took that model and expanded it so anybody could be a part of it. So I think that's why the group of school comes together. So you can, yeah, yeah, ICSM members could be a, I think, yeah. Um, and we can work to make sure the language is clear on that if we think, but I think a lot of it's going to be state board of that authority, um, which gives them a fair amount of flexibility. So that's um, one component of the bill. Second component of the bill is that it's going to require Give State Board of Ed the authority to kind of determine what mandated teacher training should be, what the timeline should be, what should or shouldn't be required. Should it be part of a licensing requirement? Should it be part of a teacher prep program? Uh, but instead of having all the mandates and here's the timeline when you have to do it, but just pump that to the State Board and say what's, what's a more appropriate um, way to do this. And then the, the third big thing in there is the whole PGP externship uh, set language that was passed last year. I know there's been a whole lot of misinformation on there about what this actually is and requires, but just to be on the safe side, they're moving it from a shall to a may. So you can do it if you want to, you don't have to. Um, so those are the, the big three things in that bill. Um, Senate Bill 2, yeah. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> So on the link on that bill, it's with, within there. It's within the bill, um, and I don't have it pulled up exactly. They essentially took the list that they had for this other group of schools and the bill that the end of the coalition of continuously improving schools, and just pulled that list and added a took a few things off of it. So, yes, yes, Marcy's going to send the link out so everybody has it. Yep. Great. So in the case where the uh, teacher training so I think it depends on what you present to the state board and what they waive. Like the dyslexia requirement. 
Yeah, so the question is if it's a school-based activity and a training combined, what all is waived? And I think there's there's going to be a whole lot of flexibility in. So, so what the speaker said in his media availability this week, what we've heard over and over is everybody complains about mandates and requirements. And then when people ask for a list of what can we get rid of, everybody's quiet, right? Nobody gives specific things. So this really puts the onus on schools to say, okay, here's what would be best for our school. Like we spend all this time doing X, so we think it's a waste of time. So we're gonna come and make the initiative to say, we don't wanna do this, we don't think it's helpful. Yeah. Any 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 mandated requirement that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um Senate 295 is Senator Ratz's, it's not the same, but it's similar to 1003. Um, it creates an innovation council that's underneath the State Board of Education. Um, and essentially schools can apply to this innovation council to be waived from mandates and regulations. Um, my concern with this bill right now is that there's a list of like 10 appointees to the Innovation Council. Um, there are people from like the School Boards Association, ISTA, nobody from the charter school world. Um, so we'll work to make sure that some charter school representation is included if this bill moves forward. Um, and in both of these, we, there are just a couple concerns from the language that where it says school corporation. So we just need to be sure in some of the definitions as it moves forward that this applies to everybody. That's the intent. I've talked with both authors and that's the intent. So we, those are a few things we're tweaking um, through. So if you see anything that pops out, please let us know, but we're working through that. Um, two others that I want to mention quickly in the DREG bucket. Senate Bill 261 is a Senator Sparks bill that also talks about teacher trainings and it just changes everything from a child to a man. So it leaves it up to local control to determine whether or not you want to do those or not, you think they're helpful or not. Um, and then Senate Bill 266 um, would require DOE to evaluate all the required teacher trainings and make recommendations that are streamlined. So a couple different approaches here. Senate Bill 266 is scheduled to be heard on Wednesday in committee. Um, personally, I like the one that switches to a child one day better, but uh, we'll, we'll see what we'll see where they end up going. Um, so it's positive that both leaders in the education committees in the House and Senate are focused on these rights. Um, we are hopeful that that helps them keep that you know lens in mind as other bills come before them. But if we're deregulating over here, we want to be careful not to pass bills that have new requirements. Uh, any questions on deregulation? All right. So the next one I want to point everyone's attention to is Senate Bill 246 which is around mental health for services in school. Um, this came up some last year and around the school safety bill. Caused all kinds of problems and concerns um, with a number of legislators, a number of schools. Um, and a lot of I think goes over the confusion and just what exactly um, are we asking schools to do from a, um, what, what level we want them to intervene in some of these mental health issues. And it, Kind of freak some parents out, freak some legislators out. So this bill essentially says that every charter school has to have an MOU with a community health provider to provide um, mental health resources to students. Not a, not a lot of detail on what level of services, not a lot of detail on what if I don't have access to it, like how, how does that partnership work? Um, in my brief conversation with um, staff from the governor's office, who this is an agenda bill for the governor, um, was they expect the Department of Health to be kind of like a provider of resources and helping make these connections, but it's unclear exactly what that looks like. It's unclear of what the cost could be. Um, so I actually have a missed call from the governor's office now who's supposed to be providing information on some, some left extra layers of detail. What does a draft MOU look like, right? I think as of last year, it was estimated that about 60 or 70 percent of school corporations had it, had some sort of partnership. Um, so, just curious if any of you have existing partnerships, what those look like. So, if you've got details on that, we have a number of schools who are kind of freaking out about this. So, um, anything you guys can share on here's what we're doing and how it works could be helppful if you move this along. Helpful with your legislators as well. Yeah. Did they do any kind of audit on the capacity for mental health services? 
So the question, yeah. So the question was, have they done any auditing on the capacity of mental health services in the state? And to my knowledge, it's no. But I'm not positive of that yet. Um, that is one of my questions to the governor staff. Who's pushing this. So yeah. we we want to make. I mean, we want to make sure we're providing services and resources to students that they need, but also in a way that's not causing a huge burden on schools. And if you don't have access, if I'm in a rural area and I may not have great access, what does that look like? Um, so, but I do know that I've heard from a handful of legislators already who, and this just, bill just dropped, like, eh, we dealt with this last year, why is this back up here again? There's just a lot of concern. I think it's a lot of it's in the unknown. Um, so yeah, so any of you who do have like a great, a good relationship or shoot us an email, let us know kind of what that looks like. Um, it would be helpful and share with others. Um, there are, I'm sure we're going to see plenty more. There are a few anti-charter bills that you're going to see in here already. And I know there will be more. Um, Senator Taylor has a couple of them. Um, Senate Bill 88, which is about you know, contracts. And does anyone on your organized, does anyone on your charter board have a relationship with the board and school and you can't, you know, no one can be making money off of it? Which, my question is how many school board members have a relative with the teacher in the school, right? Like it's just the just these continual attacks on how can we try to make it life more difficult for charters. Um Senate Bill 224, um, financial guarantees for charter schools. Um, I think that's trying to go after the Dale Bill. A lot of people are trying to fix the Dale Bill issue, um, which in many ways is already fixed because they're closed and the bill that passed last year, but they're trying to apply it. In a lot of different ways, a lot of different people. Um, so expect more of those to come. A few new bills that require new regulations. Senator Porter has House Bill 1167 again, which requires um, charters to have non or have bullying policies in place. Um, he pushes on this every year. The bill never gets heard. He always files an amendment. Um, then I go 57. Everybody's favorite cursive writing mandate is back again. So it's a ten year. Um, <laughs> it'll look familiar when you read it. Senate Bill 131 was actually heard in Senate Education Committee on Wednesday. It would require the national motto of the United States to appear in every single classroom and every single school. Um, and they they had a copy, it's, it's literally like a booster of a PDF you could print out, like of all the things that they could require. This one's probably not as costly as others could be, but it's so another requirement that I'm not sure how it possibly influences student learning, the game changer. Um, so essentially it's a, like a <laughs> legal sized paper that has in God we trust, of the American flag, a picture of the U.S. flag, or a picture of the American flag and the state flag. Um, so that bill was, we took testimony on it, and, and interesting testimony as always, and it will be amended vote only next week, and if it passes out of the Senate, I'm not sure there's any appetite here in the House, but that's just an example of, you know, obviously things that are going to make students a lot smarter, so. Um, those are the ones that I like flagged early on. Are there other or questions that you guys have, those you've heard or seen or any that popped out as you're looking through here you want to talk about? I think it's really big on addressing the conflict and the legislative issues that are going on in the state. Um, and I don't know that that's drafted anywhere now. So, so, so the question was, um, um, the question was, is there any language that will fix kind of the, the discrepancy in law about charter networks versus just individual charters? Um, I haven't seen any draft language on that yet. I'm sure there would want to be some uh, variance and matter if we can put language into if we need to. Has the department still, are they still being problematic on this? So when when I reached out to do legislative uh, director this 
fall after we first heard of this issue. Um, and I asked, I said, what, what bill would you guys push? Because they said that they pushed it a lot ago. We don't have a bill. We, we don't have any language. So I think we're getting different stories. But yeah, we need to circle up with Melissa and find out exactly what staff is doing her doing that. Um, is about um, the financial audits that charters are required to do and how um, State Board of Accounts has tweaked what they're asking for. Um, Chuck, we had a conversation with uh, some of the, uh, the firms that do all this work and did, did you have any update on any Right, which every time the conversation of, you know, well, charters aren't accountable and they should be held to the same accountability standard, I say that's fantastic. I would love it if all schools were held to the same accountability standard, including they should all get private third party audits every year. And like, well, we didn't really mean that. But um, so is everything like finalized? Because the kind of the, the feedback we got from some of the auditors were let's like get through this and see what happens and see if there are things we should tweak. But what is your take? I mean, from you guys who are paying for it and having the auditors and they're doing it, I mean, is there, it's, from what I understand, it's they're looking for more audits on federal money that has really nothing to do with where there are any errors. Um, so if anyone has suggestions on how, like, how we can tame that back, um, we're open to it. Um, what you did is <coughs> Everything changed because, you know, people's 
about what happens in Belleville. And so, of course, everybody's approach to a movement has been thrown. Right. And so, that's exactly how it's been solved. Uh, and I always think that that would be a chief complaint of the critic is you have to publish the, the rules of the audit so that we, we can anticipate and be prepared for, you know, and in our other files, I'll be honest with you, and it has for eight years, we've, we've had outstanding audits, we had another outstanding audit for this year. It's not the outcome that, that I'm complaining about, it, it is the process and, and how- And the cost, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, the cost sure is example is that too often Northern media, this more too often Northern media has had an issue or whatever. Well, they don't go and think, oh, well, we had sort of come down to Southern Indiana and we're going to you guys over right. the cold because of the Northern Indiana. They don't do that. They do that in our world alone. It does seem a little bit unfairly. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And we'll certainly look into if we can find a home for language in that. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes sense. That's just a dollar cost. Yeah, you can prepare for an audit up front that creates dollars in the And then they camped out forever and then they just camped out. Yeah. 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 Well, all of these extra things that they constantly like. I would release one. I don't know. 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 Question is Senate Bill 17, will it move? Senate Bill 17 is credit for work completed during suspension. I don't know. I haven't um, talked to Senator Rock specifically about this one. I think there was a bill similar to this last year that didn't move as well. Um, so I'm not positive. I know we talked about this essentially, you know, takes away flexibility from schools on how they want to handle each suspension case. Does anybody have? Yes. <laughs> We're trying to be loud, I promise. Um, I'm trying to repeat questions from the audience so you can hear the questions. It's going to be really hard to pick up questions from the back of the room, which is why I'm repeating them. But if you have problems hearing me, please do chime in and let us know. Um, so the question is on Senate Bill 17, credit for work completed during suspension. I don't know if this bill will be will move forward to get a hearing. Um, but it does kind of take away some flexibility that locals currently have to determine how they want to, what level of resources they want to provide. Um, and, you know, we talked about it, Carrie, right? Is this just an incentive for, I know my brother, if he would have found a reason to get, um, well, great, I don't want to show up for school as long as I can still get credit and still leave on time. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Interesting bills. Um, one thing I said was 234. I haven't had a chance to go through this. Like I've only skimmed it, so I need to do a, a deeper dive in it. But it's high school equivalent. It's a high school equivalency pilot program. And so if our uh, friends in the adult uh, charter space and, and options, the alternative world, can maybe take a look at this one and see if this. It, it doesn't impact you. It's a pilot that specifically mentions schools, which is really odd that they specifically call it schools. Um, but if you guys want to take a look at that and just see if this makes sense or causes any concern. <laughs> okay. Pilot are Richmond, which would make sense by Senator Rock's pilot because that's when it's that's in the district. 
uh, MSC of Washington, MSC of Warren, and uh, EVSC in Evansville. Right. Now I think we need to pick up, I mean, Okay. I'll take a deeper dive in that, but if you guys want to, if that's what it is, it sounds really concerning. Um, but if you guys want to just take a, if you see anything specific about it, please let us know if you guys can look through that. A question online. Sure. The question is about have we seen a bill that would change core 40 to core 25 or, or reducing it in some way? Um, the state board has talked about this some in their accountability conversations. I think Pat Nate specifically talked about how do we focus um, on these. We have not seen a bill yet. I don't. I have not heard if there's a specific one that will be filed. So we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, but as of today, I'm not aware of one. No. So the question was, will House Bill 1158 go anywhere? And that's a representative Hatfield bill that would require all teachers to be paid uh, $50,000 at a minimum. Um, that bill will not be going anywhere, along with the three dozen other bills that are filed on teacher pay. Um, the House Democrat Caucus has already had a couple of amendments that they called that talk about teacher pay, putting some of the reserve funding in to go to teacher pay. Um, but as we talked about at the beginning, the putting any one-time money into teacher pay is only setting the legislature up for uh, everyone to come back and say, well, you have to give us more money and we don't know we have it. Uh, it may not be there. I also personally have a really hard time seeing like the state having a mandated teacher pay scale. I mean, that takes away so much local control. I, I can't imagine how that would actually work, um, work well, but I'm, so, we'll see a bunch of bills like that. I think. One of them has something about uh, work spending. <clears throat> uh, it's a Senator Alting bill. I don't remember the number, but essentially it was a stipend or a salary increase to teachers using any or using some of the additional revenue from the sports wagering world. Um, so I know like this much about sports wagering because my husband uh, runs the casino association for the state, but I know that they're not expecting it to be a huge windfall of money, right? I think the first fall, the first year when everyone decided about it, the numbers are going to be up some, but overall, when you look at all the gaming money, it's a really small percentage of what they think is from the state. So I would worry about setting up money based on a pot that we don't know will exist. Um, yes, I didn't I did see that. So that's a great point. Yes, the tag grant is still in place. So nothing has been proposed this session to eliminate the tag grant. It will stay in place as it was passed in the budget. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, council members, my research writes that there are urgent issues that need to be addressed. So oh, I think you can bring that up. I meant to mention this. So there are a couple bills around I read. I think Representative Prescott had another one, 1171, that would just eliminate it. So there's some concern that you know we. I, I learn and I step ten are required by the feds. I read is the only one required by the state. So we just do away with that. Um, the state board on Wednesday on their agenda, they have a proposed rule to have discussion about of uh, can I learn potential I learn three be used as a screener so that only those kids who essentially don't test out of it can take I read um, so that you limit the number of kids taking I read. So I. I talked with Representative Baining about um, both of these diary bills yesterday to just get a sense where he was. I think he's interested in hearing them and having the conversation, but he wants to see how the state board meeting goes. I think if we can reduce some testing, 
Um, obviously, the third grade reading policy is still important to a lot of folks at the state house. Um, making sure kids know how to read is important. Um, but if there are ways that we can streamline or reduce the amount of testing to make this year, I think everyone's for it. So we'll be interested to see how that conversation with the state board goes. Um, when I talked to state board staff a couple weeks ago, you know, they said they were just beginning conversations with their technical advisory committee, their testing experts on what that looks like, how do we make sure we're measuring the right things. So it'll be an interesting conversation to watch. But something could potentially happen this session. Um, obviously not in time for spring testing, but potentially next year. So the question was, are there any bills uh, specifically around decreasing the dyslexia requirements? Um, I haven't seen any uh, that specifically reference dyslexia. Now, the ones I mentioned earlier in the DREG, the 1003, those, I believe, I have to go back and double check that for the protected statute, but I believe you could make your case to the state board of, here's how we don't want to do this, or here's a modified way of what, how we want to do this um, to make your case to the state board. So I think that would all fall under 1003. There may be bills to come yet. We'll keep our eye out for them. But to, to my knowledge, I'm not aware of any um, specifically kind of backtracking on that. Um, last year, we attempted to get language in that around the scientifically based yes. session activity. Can we get that? Yes, that language is in Senate Bill. Oh, the question was on the child abuse reg or the child abuse training. That language is in Senate Bill 295. Um, it was included in House Bill 1640 last year, which was all set to pass, bipartisan support, good bill should pass, and then they added the cursive writing mandate to it, and so that bill died. But along with it was that requirement. So that bill is in 290, or that language is in 295 to strike the evidence based. It makes it really hard, right? So <laughs> it was the bill we didn't want it to die last year, actually. So, but um, interesting. So this year, the speaker has decided that any bill that calls for a summer study committee is getting sent to the rules committee, and the rules committee is known for the place where bills go to die. Um, so, like every bill that was filed that had creating a summer study committee, we sent it to rules. Um, essentially, the process is it's really easy to get a summer study committee if you want to. Like, you can write a letter to the leadership and say, I'd like this summer study committee. And then at the end of session, when the four leaders from each caucus get together, they all vote on what do we want to spend our time on this summer. And I think there were like 300 and some study committees that they voted on last year of like different topics. And so I think the speaker's point was we don't need to waste our time hearing these bills when it can be as simple as. A letter. So if we want to kill a bill this year, we just need to get some summer study committee language in there. So keep that in mind too. <laughs> Any other questions, issues, or Again, this is an early list. This packet's probably going to get a lot thicker by the end of next week. Um, I assume that most bills will be will be made public by next week. Um, there may be a few stragglers that they haven't assigned a committee by then. Um, so please do be sure um, to check out the link when Marcy sends it to you. And again, it'll update automatically. So every day there'll be new bills to it probably next week. So if you have questions, if you see anything that's like, whoa, what is this? Either good or bad, um, please. Let Marcy, Ted, and myself know so we can, um, you know, it's going to be a fast moving session, right? Like you have the deadlines on the first page. So um, keep us posted quick. It's going to move, it's going to move fast. One more question. Is that any about the Yeah. 
So the question is about removing the CE slash CC reporting. Um, this comes up every year. I know the, um, what was the committee that initially met? It was under Glenda, kind of the DREG working committee. They were like this close to getting rid of the CC reports and then it didn't. So again, I think this is something that would fall under the 1003 requirement. Um, whether or not it gets added in as we're just eliminating them entirely. I know the department, um, I haven't seen it in the bill yet, but I know that it was part of their legislative agenda is to um, change the change the dates in the fall so that we move to one, one date um, so that you move uh, special ed in with like your basic ADM count. Um, I know some schools like the idea of that because it's all in one. Some schools I think are concerned that we've heard about can we get all of our special ed stuff in by that October, mid-October date? So, yeah. so I think they were looking at like an October, some some period of October. Um, uh, yes, to try to combine them all. Um, I think some of that's going to depend on how all the link system rolls out and how that's working. So keep us posted on how all that's working on your end, right? Um, from a reporting standpoint. Not that I've heard. I think it was just from a reporting side. How do we streamline it? Because do we believe they will be able to, like the cleanup periods will be much easier under the new link system? I just don't know how quickly that's working. Like I know on the, the non-public side, they're they're still a ways away from even like they haven't even given the non-public schools like the ability to send submit data differently yet. So I don't I don't know how they're gonna make all that work. Any other questions? Well, thank you guys for being here. Happy Friday. Hope you have a great weekend. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Essentially, just a couple uh, reminders of how to use our action center. So, um, as any bills come up that we think the charter community will want to like, obviously engage on, um, within the PowerPoint, and I know Marcy will send this out to you, there's a link to our action center. Um, we will put actions up there, like as bills come up, um, it's easy to kind of forward to parents or teachers or whoever's interested. But there's also a way out there to search for your legislator. So, if you ever just want to find a legislator, you know, it's, it's easy to do that. The other thing is just some upcoming dates around National School Choice Week. So last week in January is National School Choice Week. Um, <clears throat> if you have any student videos for our video contest, the deadline is Monday. So please get those in. The link is in the PowerPoint, um, has all the details of requirements who to submit those to. Um, we will, the winners receive a cash prize Schools um, can receive uh, money based on how many qualified videos you send them. You send us a bunch of videos where like, I like my school because school lunch is great. You might not qualify. Um, it needs to be like meaningful stories, right? Um, but these are a great tool for us students who are talking to legislators because at some point they get tired of seeing my face and seeing the face of a kid whose life has been changed. It's a whole lot more impactful than me telling them why they should care about charter schools. Um, so please, if you have kids um, or, or parents or teachers who want to submit anything, please do that. Um, we'll recognize those winners at our breakfast on January 29th. Um, I, know some, I know many of you have participated in the past. Um, if you have any students um, interested in coming, we uh, always try to connect legislators and students, come you know, sit down at the table, have breakfast, and let the kids tell their story, let the parents tell their story to the legislator. Super impactful. We've had so many positive uh, so much positive feedback from legislators who said, you know, you used to do like this big rally at the state house where we had a thousand people and essentially it was just kids that spilled lemonade and popcorn. Nobody paid attention to why we were there, but this way we actually get to connect stories uh, with legislators and, it, and it's helpful. The governor always shows up, we get a nice picture of him and the kid. Um, so if anyone is interested, it'll be at the Conrad on Wednesday morning. I know here in Indianapolis, it's a whole lot easier to be here. Sorry for those of you who aren't, but really when you're dealing with the legislative session, um, breakfast is really the only time you can guarantee that legislators can show up before anything else gets started. 
Um, so if you're interested in coming or bringing a few kids or a couple parents, um, let us know. We've, space is limited, but we've got some room. We just want to make sure we um, have a nice mix of folks from across the state. Um, also that evening, or Wednesday 29th, our partners at EdChoice are going to be hosting a reception. Everybody's invited to that link up there um, is where you can RSVP and get additional information. Um, they will be showing the screening of Miss Virginia, um, which I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard it's an awesome school choice video that's getting my positive reaction from them. So feel free to join for that. Um, and anytime, you know, if anybody, if there's a build that pops up and they're like, I want to come testify, or I need to talk to so and so, if you're going to be around on Wednesday, you're going to come to the breakfast, if you want us to try to schedule some legislative meetings with you, let us know, give us some time so we can try to. Um, to make sure we connect with our legislators. Um, I think everybody knows this, right? The legislative schedule changes every single day. We don't know how long committees last. We don't know how long session lasts. This will be like the day before our committee report deadline or one deadline, so it'll probably be a busy day. Um, but if we know you're going to be there, we can at least give legislators like a time frame and try to find some time. So if that works out, or if there's any other day that, hey, we should go to the state house, um, let us know. We'll be happy to help make that. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining. Um, of course, of course. Um, let us know how we can help throughout the way. Don't be a stranger. Thank you. Thank you. I think Marcy's going to. Yes. Yes, we do. And so I, I just kind of had it.